Well, here we have a quick video on how to pull the platen on a Remington Streamline 5. Um, somebody had sent me a message on YouTube asking me to show them how to do it, and I happen to have one that I need to pull the platen out to get it recovered anyway. Uh, I'm going to be sending this one off to JJ Short probably, probably on Monday, actually. Um, and today's Sunday, so i got to get it done. Um, pretty easy to do. Uh, all you're going to need is a screwdriver. You're going to need the right screwdriver, though. Uh, this is a set that I bought at Woodcraft. Um, has varying amounts of or thicknesses of slotted screwdrivers. Uh, you know, this is like 25 bucks, and you can get better, but you can also get a whole lot worse easier than you can get better. Um, you're not going to find anything at Lowe's or Home Depot that's going to work, just because they made screws differently back then, and that means they make screwdrivers differently now. First thing you're going to need to do is to get this left knob off of there, and that is done by rotating it counterclockwise as you're looking at it. So it's going to go this way around it. You're going to need to grab the right hand. Actually, you're supposed to grab the platen, but it's kind of hard to get purchase on that. Most of the time, it's going to be a little difficult. Now, you might be able to uh, get you a pair of, you know, if you have to, you might be able to get a pair of, channel locks down in there with a rag on the end of them to grip that platen but i don't know with this one i didn't have to uh you know i loosened this up with a little bit of pb blaster that i soaked in there and it came out just fine so i'm grabbing the knob right here because i know this machine you're not supposed to grab the knob you're supposed to grab the platen because this thing doesn't screw into the knob it screws into the platen um and that's where the tension is. And if you're grabbing the knob, then you're risking breaking that set screw. Um, but like I said, I know this machine and this one's already loosened up. So we're going to, again, go this way. That's over the top, back that way. So it's going to unscrew like that. And you're gonna unscrew that until it comes completely out. All right, so that guy's out. That's step one. Step two, we're gonna move the carriage this way. You need to take your paper fingers, set them all the way to the outside. This one too, all the way to the outside. Take your carriage all the way over, uh, hit your margin release if you need to. My margins are set really wide, so there's no need to. And you need to loosen that set screw now. You may have two set screws, you may only have one. Depends on when your machine is from. All right, got my screwdriver set. You want your screwdriver to be in there snug. It needs to not have any wiggle or play because if you strip one of these set screws, good effing luck getting it out of there. Um, you can, man, you can bugger up a machine real quick that way. All right, there's my set screw. Set him aside on a little magnet tray. And now we remove the knob. Now, your knob might be bound in there a little bit, so you might need to take some PB blaster or some liquid wrench or something and put it, you know, put a drop or two down in that hole, maybe in this little crevice between the carriage collar and the platen collar. Um, you know, maybe right down in there. You might drip a, a drop or two down inside that index channel there. Um, you know, if you are having trouble with it, hold the platen firm and twist the knob and just wiggle it easy as it comes out and then once you have it out clean that sucker don't be afraid to use some steel wool on it um, get it nice and smooth all right so we've got the knob off we have the rod out now you're going to lift the right end of the platen and raise it you can do that just a hair here because we're going to clear that little collar and now with the collar cleared just a little bit we're gonna pull the platen to the right. Now as you're doing this, your index arrangement over here is gonna to wanna to come apart. Don't let it come apart. Unless you know how to put it back together, don't let it come apart. It's really not that complicated, but it's a whole lot easier if it stays put. All right, so now you got your platen out. Um, wrap this sucker up and send it off to JJ Short. And you know, two weeks or so, you'll get your platen back and you'll be like, ooh, 
fresh rubber. And then you got to put it back in, right? And this is where hopefully you had taken pictures or you remember exactly what you did because you're going to need to get it back in. And getting it back in is the hard part. Getting it out is easy. It, you know, the, the instruction manual tells you to just do the reverse order of what you did, but it's never that simple, right? Right. So we're going to start with the left end. We're going to guide it in. We'll hold that index paw up and feed that in. Now I gotta lift up that paper finger. Use my screwdriver for that. Get it seated. You might need to uh, your index tensioner right there, that little roller. Might need to give it some tension down. You can reach it with a screwdriver to get it back up onto the uh, the sprocket. And most likely what you're gonna run into is trouble getting that actual rod seated in this collar. You can take your screwdriver, put it in the very end there, give it a jiggle or two as you're pushing left. There we go. And get it seated. So now the platen collar is seated on the right hand side and we're ready to put the rod back in. You want to line up the uh, the set screw hole to where it's up top. It just makes it easier. And look at your platen rod as well. There's most likely a little flat spot on the rod, and you need that to be aligned with the hole because that's what your screw gains purchase on, right? So we're going to put that in there, wiggle it as I'm doing it the whole way. You're going to get to the end. There's going to be a little bit of resistance because it has to find its home there. See. There's that resistance, and there's it finding its home. I'll look down in that hole, make sure that my flat spot is lined up. All right, grab my screw. Put it on the end there. Get it seated. And again, to seat screws, I mean, you can spin it backwards just a little bit until it clicks in place, and you'll find the threads. It's learn that trick with an erector set really really early in life. All right, got him snugged down. And now we got to put that knob back in. And this is one of the trickiest parts because you can break this index thing here. Um, this index release. And if you look carefully at this one, I don't know if I can get my camera to focus on it or not. See there's a, a little hole in the center there where this thing spins. And that shouldn't be that way. Because this one broke free. So that's one thing that could happen. And, at, and as you're looking at this knob, you'll see that there is a flanged portion. All of that larger portion should be outside of this platen collar once you're done. All of that skinnier portion will be inside. And you might need to jiggle your platen up and down and around to be able to get it to go in there. And this one, I've got it just right. Check your index. Should be working. So there you go. That's how to get your platen in and out of a Remington Streamline 5. And this will be exactly this, you know, it'll be the exact same process for the uh, the streamliner, you know, the one with the big arm. And it's pretty much the exact same process for the uh, the Deluxe Model 5 as well. Um, they're all essentially the exact same machine. So there you go. Get fresh rubber on there, man. It is well worth it. These are darn fine typers. Hope that helps.